We're continuing our discussion about how to motivate your workers because performance is ability times motivation. And so how can we motivate the workers uh, in order to increase the performance of our workers and of the organization? So we're gonna start here with Mary Parker Follett. Mary Parker Follett was a US social worker and she was involved in many volunteer organizations. Now, as she was doing this volunteer work, she was noticing around her in the community, there was a number of labor disputes. So we're looking at the early, the early 19, 1920-ish time period where we have very powerful labor unions starting to emerge in the US. And when the labor union was fighting with management, they often led to bloodshed. That is, the labor union would protest, maybe they would sabotage, sabotage equipment, maybe they would keep management from being able to access the factory. Management would then hire um, individuals who weren't part of the union to go in and do production. And this led to conflict fights and people died uh, in these conflicts. So Mary Parker Follett observing this says, well, there's got to be a better way to deal with conflict. And so when we look at Mary Parker Fuller, we often look at theories in terms of conflict management. So how do you motivate employees? You need to look for the win-win. When there is a conflict between employees and management, we're looking for the win-win. Well, what do we mean by win-win? Well, according to Follett, most of the time, what we have in organizations is we have power over. The idea that management is going to motivate with fear. Do the job or get fired. Don't do the job correctly, lose pay. So it's domination, it's control, it's coercion. And what Follett is advocating is instead power with. So let's share the power. Let's have more collaboration, more collective action. So what Follett is doing is taking her work in terms of volunteer and nonprofit work and saying, rather than have highly centralized organization where it's highly formalized and the boss tells people exactly what to do and how to do it, instead, she says, man discovers his true nature, gains his true freedom, only through the group. So advocating for a structure that is more team oriented uh, in terms of everything is a collaboration between employees and management. So that means that if there's conflict between employees and management, we need to focus on a collaborative solution. So according to Follett, the outcomes of a conflict are one of four. Okay, so let's think about, there's a dispute between labor and management. Maybe as we're looking at uh, coming out of COVID and we see the inflation in 2022 is what, 9% for the year, right? The cost of living is going up. So individuals, workers cannot afford, uh, their current salary is not buying the same goods, the basic food, vegetables, paying the rent that it used to. So labor wants a raise a cost of living adjustment uh, because of inflation. Well, management is looking at it from a budget perspective and saying, well, our costs are going up. We can't afford these higher costs to make our goods provide our service because of inflation. So we definitely can't afford to give anybody a raise. In fact, what we need is we need the cost to go down. All right, here's a conflict. What's the solution? According to Follett, there's four options. One, voluntary submission by one side. So management has a lot of the power. The labor union could cave and say, okay, we know the business is not doing well, costs are high, we'll just not get a raise this year. Voluntary submission. Alternatively, we could have a struggle where there is victory of one side over the other. So labor union says, give us the raise or we go on strike. The business either incurs cost because of the strike or is afraid of the strike. And so they cave and the union gets their increase. In either case, people are not happy. 
if one just gives in to the other or one dominates the other, then the parties aren't happy. It's not, as Follett said, a win-win. While often we hear about conflict management, we are told to find a compromise, something in between. So maybe instead of giving a 9% raise, the workers, there's a compromise between zero or negative and nine, maybe it's a 2% raise increase, 2% salary, 2% salary increase. So a compromise. Well, according to Follett, the problem with compromise is it only postpones the conflict. Neither party are happy, neither party gets what they want, and then a couple months, a year later, management's back looking for cost cutting, the labor union is looking for more salary increase because they never got the cost of living adjustment. So a compromise, according to Follett, only postpones the conflict for another day. So instead, what she's saying is that you need integration. We need an alternative solution that both parties support. So instead of a salary increase or a salary decrease to do cost cutting to help with the budget, is there a third, is there another alternative that both parties would be in favor for? So perhaps instead we have performance-based pay. If the company does well, okay, then the employees will get a portion of that increase in profits. It's not the salary increase the employees wanted, but they need some increase in pay. It's not the cost cutting that the business was looking for, but it's not going to add to their expenses because they only have to pay it if the company is actually doing well. So if we have a performance-based pay where we are doing some profit sharing, is that a third alternative that is, as Follett says, a win win. You might hear the term win-win in popular culture. I'll give you a link here uh, to this website. You can see a clip from the show The Office uh, where he talks about a win-win-win. So here we're managing conflict between employees and not only do the both employees want to win, but the manager wants to win as well. So win-win-win. So check out that video clip um, if you are a fan of The Office. As we're looking at the issue of dealing with conflict and saying people are motivated when we can find solutions to conflict, let's look at how well you manage conflict. So if you're following along with the Pearson Revel, we're looking at assessing how well we deal with interpersonal conflict. All right, and in this particular survey, what it looks at is three parts to how you deal with conflict. And if we look here at mine, it looks like I have <laughs> just between low and normal ability to deal with conflict. So not so great. All right, so where are we deficient as we deal with conflict? So we outline three parts to conflict. There is initiating the complaint. So identifying that there is conflict. When you let other people know that there is conflict, do you focus on the person you have conflict with or the problem that is at issue? And then how well you do you respond to criticism? So when the conflict involves you, how well do you handle it? The third one is about mediating conflict. So how well do you deal when other people are in conflict? Well, you might be like me, in which case I'm okay with mediating conflict between others and helping to find a solution. Although we've learned from Mary Parker Follett, it's not about a compromise, it's about finding the win-win. And maybe like me, while you might be okay at mediating conflict between others, you don't like having your own conflict with people, right? You don't like to feel like you did something wrong or be accused of being not good enough. And so maybe you need to work on in terms of how you deal with conflict when it involves you personally compared to conflict that involves others. 
There's another uh, Pearson Revel survey we can look at, which is how do you handle a conflict? What strategies do you use for dealing with conflict? And so based on the survey, we have identified five different strategies for dealing with conflict. The key here is do you use all the tools that are available to you? And do you use the appropriate ones <coughs> excuse me, at the right time? So when we look at how you deal with conflict and you look at your score, so I seem to be normal versatility to managing conflict. Which strategies do you tend to use a lot? So we can see for me here, uh, I'm high in collaborating and compromising. So as we saw in the previous survey, right, in terms of mediating others' conflict, in terms of uh, getting people to work together and to finding a solution between the groups. All right, so as I work in terms of negotiations um, for a labor union and we're trying to find compromise with the organization, we're trying to collaborate on solutions to resolve issues. So here really we're dealing with conflict between other individuals and so really the focus is on that compromise and collaboration. But there's also a recognition that sometimes when there's conflict, you need to stick to the solution you're recommending. You need to be assertive and forceful in terms of getting your way. And sometimes you need to be accommodating. That is, you let the other person win. And you can see that those for me are not as high as dealing with the conflict between others in terms of sticking to my guns and pushing for what needs to happen or to relinquish and let the other side win. The other one we can see here um, is the fifth one is avoiding. So are you the kind of person who gets involved in conflict or do you sometimes just avoid it and step away and there's an appropriate time to avoid conflict in my role and in leading a negotiations team i often step into conflicts that maybe i shouldn't uh, and so the point is is that uh, i'm getting engaged rather than avoiding i am entering in to be part of the conflict and so that's this avoiding piece here. Sometimes you need to just walk away and avoid dealing with the conflict uh, as opposed to jumping in uh, to the fight uh, for others with others or creating um, opportunities to have those, those fights and conflicts. So there are five strategies for uh, dealing with or managing conflict, being forceful, so pushing for your way, accommodating, letting others have their way, finding a compromise, working to find a solution in collaboration, and sometimes avoiding that conflict altogether.